This brings us to the end of the course. I hope everyone who looked at it learned a few things. As I said at the start, there are so many things to learn, and it was hard when developing this course to know where to stop. I tried to provide a mix of topics, and this is based on the mix of skills that I believe a good embedded software developer needs. Fundamentally, you need to be able to write or, and do good software design and good coding. I think that sometimes embedded developers get too focused on the details of the hardware interface and forget about the overall software design. Keep in mind that usually software is enhanced much more than hardware, so good software design is essential. And a good embedded developer also needs to really understand what is happening behind the scenes, like how software builds work, how libraries work, how code and data are assigned to memory, how an MCU boots up, and so on. You're building a complete system, and like it or not, you may be responsible for the complete system. Now, I wanted to end this course by reflecting on the infrastructure modules in Superloop that we have studied. So what does this software provides, provide? Well, it provides common services like logging and a console command framework. It provides hardware abstraction and portability for application modules. This is because application level modules use infrastructure modules like DIO and Timer that have generic APIs. To port to another MCU, the DIO and Timer modules may require work, but not the application level stuff. Ideally, it will just compile. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, our infrastructure provides resource sharing in a way that allows independence between application modules. For example, in this course, we had two application modules, Blinky and GPS. Both of these modules use timers, both used CPU, obviously. They both make use of the console, but they were developed and operate independently of each other. And that is desirable in a software system. It is basic software engineering. Now these functions I just listed are typically provided by an operating system. And at a low level, our infrastructure provides some OS-like functions. Of course, operating systems typically do a lot more, and they do it a lot better. For example, our sharing of CPU time via the super loop is very crude and has weaknesses. And let me show you an example of that weakness. So here I am at the console. Let me push the reset button. Now I'm going to dump out statistics on how fast we are running the super loop. So on average, we're running it pretty fast, five microseconds. The maximum is one millisecond, but this measurement is based on the sys tick counter so it could be quite a bit less than one millisecond. We, mid, we need better resolution on these statistics. Anyhow, I'm going to run the help command, and then I'm going to once again dump the stats, and the max has now went up to two milliseconds. That, that help command uh, must have taken a millisecond or so, which is longer than I would think, but this MCU is not super fast. Now let's turn on the GPS map, and I'm going to turn it right off again because it messes with the display. Okay, so now let's look at the statistics, and we can see that average is still 5 microseconds, but the max has went up to 14 milliseconds. That's a long time. Of course, the GPS module is doing a bunch of um, trigonometry to produce this map. Anyhow, with our super loop architecture, this, this means that the other modules in the loop had 14 milliseconds between runs at least one time. This might be a problem, and let's assume it is. In other words, say we have modules that need to run at least once every millisecond. Now, you could perhaps solve this in some clever way, maybe provide timer callbacks that run within an interrupt handler. It might be fun, and of course, you would understand exactly how it works. But you might bite off more than you can chew. 
So another alternative is to get an RTOS, maybe a free one like free R RTOS, and use that to run your code. With an RTOS, you could run the console commands, including the, the GPS map um, function, in a lower priority task that would get preempted when a higher priority task needed to run. Now with this new flexibility comes more design issues like multiple threads accessing common data. You would have to solve those, but it gives you a tool to meet your real-time requirements. So that's it for the course. I'd like to thank again everyone who watched these videos and wish you good luck in your future studies or hobby or career.